Hello, my name is Achilles, and welcome to Achilles Gaming. In this video, I'm going to make a quick tutorial on Bandicam and how to just maximize the usage of it, how to make sure that's efficient, how to make sure that the settings are correct to get the best quality videos you possibly can. Uh, I'm actually making this for a friend who I know uh, had some issues with Bandicam. If you're seeing this, and I hope this helps you out a lot. So, nothing to really change in general. Uh, just make sure that audio complete, auto complete recording is disabled. Bandicam windows on top is of course your personal preference. And the output folder, make sure that it's somewhere where you can actually find it. Of course, there's always the open button right here. I'm sorry everybody, my Bandicam decided to crash on me for some reason. That's not something that happens usually. I think it's because I was trying to record Bandicam up close. Anyways, uh, in your record in the video tab, you can choose your hotkey to record. Obviously, this is important. If you like to make it where you can pause it, then you can do that as well. Um, you can choose hide mouse cursor, add mouse click, mouse click effect. Uh, mouse click effect means that whenever you click the mouse, then like left click might have like a green like circle that kind of uh, flows out from the click point. And if you right click, then it might be a red one. That way people can see what you're clicking, when you're clicking, and where. And uh, that's up to you, just depends on what you're doing. If you're doing like a tutorial on how to do Photoshop or something, then that might be a good effect to use because it's hard to follow your, your mouse sometimes on that and see what you're clicking. Under settings, under the record option, you can choose all kinds of different things. Under options, record priority higher, uh, you want basically higher than normal priority. You want it to have a pretty high priority, but you don't want it to be the highest, especially for gaming. For obvious reasons, your game will then, you know, not work as well. If you don't have a very good computer, then you might want to run normal. You're just going to have to experiment with that and see which one gets you the better frames inside your game. Uh, do not have this turned on. Skip recording while frame is not updated. That means that if something is not moving in your video, then basically it will stop recording, in which case right now, if I had that enabled, you would not get my voice, it would just stop. So you don't want that. Um, you definitely want to use enhanced capture method, uh, faster Windows 8 or above, whatever, for your rectangle on screen. I don't think it's an option to turn off or on. Uh, you can add your mouse effects, and you can choose the color here of the mouse effects. You can add your logo. That way it always puts your logo down in, the right, in one of the points on the screen. That's really good for people like me who have a logo, then I pretty often put it in most of my videos. Sadly, it will not run with the logo I currently have for some reason. I don't know. It just doesn't like my logo. Uh, sound, you want to basically have uh, your primary to be your microphone, your secondary to be your Windows 7. Uh, two sound mixing, uh, this, you know, you, you, tube sound mixing, that's good. That basically makes it to where you don't have 5.1, meaning five different soundtracks, all different types of things, and if you delete one of them, everything goes to hell. Uh, only record secondary device while pushing space. That is up to you, depending on what you want to do. I do not recommend it, because it just causes more to have to do. You want to hit record sound, obviously, turned on. Sa save audio tracks while recording, dot WAV, do not do that. It will just increase the amount of space that your videos take up. And on top of that, you'll have to match the sound up, and it's going to be more work than it's worth. Uh, you can choose settings here, and you can choose you know, like all this stuff and change properties on the microphone and such. Uh, that's pretty much it for under the videos. Now for format, this is where things get interesting. You want to make sure that you are recording in 30 frames per second. YouTube cannot at all, no matter what you do, show videos in higher than 30 frames per second. So if you're recording in say 60 frames, A, your file sizes are going to be huge. You're going to be huge, like double of what they should be. It's going to take them longer to upload to YouTube, longer to render, and on top of that, you, it will actually look smoother if you move and if you do it in 30 frames because the the system that YouTube uses to lower the video down to 30, it doesn't do a good job. If you upload in 60, uh, then and they then they will lower it to 30 automatically. And when it happens, it does cause a quality issue. It will not. It will be rougher. It won't be as smooth as if it was in 30. So make sure you're rendering and always recording in 30 frames on a single point of a f not a single quarter of a frame higher, whatever. Um, 1920 by 1080. If you want to do 1072, uh, I've explained that in other videos. Then you can. Um, 100Q. That's I, I'm pretty sure that's quality. So 
audio, 48.0k hertz, kilohertz, stereo, because my microphone is a condenser microphone and none of this is set up to record in 7.1 surround sound, it's just, no. Uh, you want to go to presets and you definitely want to choose the one that you're using. Uh, like in this case, uh, I'm using, actually, Sony Vegas Premiere and Pinnacle, there you go. As you can see there, they have presets depending on what type of uh, editor you're using. If you're just like recording it and putting it straight to YouTube, which you should not do, then you can do that. As you can see, it only goes 720p, main reason why you should do not do that. Uh, low end PC, I'm not really sure what that is, half size default, uh, fat, fat fit width, whatever. PowerPoint, Sony Vegas, you know, you can choose here or you can just auto, uh, manually choose the settings. Uh, I did have an audio issue until I chose the preset for Sony Vegas Premiere slash Pinnacle. And of course, after you choose the preset, it's going to want to record in higher than 30 frames. So make sure you click there and change that. I am not going to do that because Bandicam is probably going to crash if I try to change anything while I'm recording. So next we want to go to image this is where you take pictures is very in it's very useful for a lot of different things you want to make sure that you have jpeg high quality um if you want to do like a like multiple screen multiple pictures uh to try to get every single angle and such then you can turn that on hide mouse cursor of course you always want that on enable shutter sound if you want it i don't really see why you'd want it but then the bow of course you know um the last thing I want to talk about with this is that the target, I'm not going to click on it because again I do not want to mess my bandicam up bad, but if you click on target then you can choose a rectangle on the screen to record or you can choose to just click on a window or on your desktop and record it. This means that you can uh, basically when you click on rectangle on screen you can easily lay down a rectangle which you can use your, your mouse to make it larger or smaller, that's actually what I'm using to record right now, and basically uh, you can edit the settings for this and it makes it to where it stretches, it crops the image to 1920 by 1080p. So even if I say, uh, fitted the box perfectly around Bandicam right here, which is what I was doing in the beginning of the video as you may have noticed, then it would still come out in 1920 by 1080p and it would not be fuzzy. That's the one of, that's why I bought Bandicam over Fraps because that is a huge advantage. I can record my my desktop very easily. I can record certain things. I can take photos really easily. If I'm doing a tutorial in World of Warcraft, I can easily take a snapshot of my macros up close, and then I won't have to go back in and do all the cropping and fancy stuff in my video editor to you know get my macros to come up full screen rather than people having to squint and look at try to figure out what my macros are. So, um, since I've gone so far in a bandy cam, I also want to say that this, I prefer this over Fraps. The quality is better. Audio and video quality is better. The options, there are so many more options. You could even throw in your logo. I mean, come on. <laughs> Fraps couldn't do that. So, uh, the rectangle is wonderful. Bandicam is absolutely wonderful. It's $40, and it is my favorite recording software. And, you know, if you are looking for recording software and you got $40, definitely check it out. You can also get the free trial version from their website, and you and that's pretty wonderful. That uh, you can get for 10 minutes, you can record, and it does give you a watermark up here at the top of your screen, but it's just a watermark, you know. Uh, it's very much worth it. It's free download from bandysoft.com or something like that. Uh, wonderful, wonderful product, and you'll like it, and it does extremely high-quality videos. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and all that wonderful stuff. And Achilles signing out.